Darcy James, argue winner of the Haygood Hardy Jazz Award tonight at the 2017 SoCan Awards. Can you talk a little bit about uh, how the album Real Enemies grew out of this multimedia work exploring conspiracy theories and the politics of paranoia and how you express that in instrumental music? Sure. So the initial spark actually came from my girlfriend, Lindsay Beierstein. She handed me a book by this historian, Catherine Olmsted, and said, you have to read this. And I did. Um, and then I stole the title of the book, <laughs> which is Real Enemies. Uh, and it, it is a fantastic depiction of how, um, sort of why people believe conspiracy theories, but also how people in power exploit conspiracy theories and use them to advance their own agendas. Essentially, like how the politics of fear can be weaponized. And uh, I started working on this back in 2014, and it hasn't become any less salient since then. Um, but uh, I will admit, you asked about instrumental music. It is not entirely instrumental music. We do have some salient uh, voiceover audio clips from uh, George Bush Sr., his uh, New World Order speech, and uh, John F. Kennedy, his famous speech about secret societies. And so there are little sort of bits woven through the piece about uh, sort of highlighting the way in which people in power have used uh, paranoia and the politics of fear to achieve their own ends. Can you tell us a bit about your compositional process? I mean, when you're sitting down, when you're writing, when you're in, the, in that space that you're creating, what happens? Where do you go? So the process for this, because originally it was a multimedia production, so uh, it was a collaboration between myself, um, a Canadian filmmaker named Peter Negrini, uh, and uh, my friend, writer-director Isaac Butler. And so I had a, sort of a script from Isaac uh, listing the, you know, we had an outline that we developed together and then I had a script about what each chapter would be about, what, what type of conspiracy it would be dealing with, whether it was, you know, mind control or uh, reptilian shape-shifting aliens or <laughs> everything J. Edgar Hoover did. Mm -hmm. And uh, my process was really to sort of think about what kind of music each of those settings really demanded like for Jagger Hoover a lot of it was spy music particularly you know the spy music of 1950s and 1970s and getting like a real G-man vibe and then for uh, doomsday cults it, you know there we I sort of had to write a hymn I had to write sort of some church music and then figure out a way to mess with it uh, so it really came from the, you know, it came kind of organically from whatever each conspiracy, the nature of each conspiracy.